Hey guys, it's Max, and we're back with Battle Code 2015. This time, let's write some code so that our towers can shoot at the enemy. We can reuse this code for other shooting units. If the type is robot type dot um, tower, then we'll want to shoot. We we'll use the same code in the headquarters here. Maybe we'll give shooting a lower priority than spawning units. To shoot at an enemy, we'll need to get a list of nearby enemies. Those lists have type robot info and their arrays. I'll call this list nearby enemies. I'll type rc.sense nearby robots. There are various methods that have the same name, since nearby robots, since robots, and you give it a, an integer, which is the distance squared that you'd like to look around since nearby robots, and you give it the distance and which team, and the third version, which takes a center as well. I guess ordinarily it assumes that you're sensing robots around your location. The reason why you can select a distance is because you have team shared vision. All right, let's look for the nearby enemies just around this robot, just within its shooting range. So around your location within your shooting range, which is rc.kitype.attackRadiusSquared. In battle code we use squared numbers because it's more computationally efficient than taking square roots all the time. So this integer should be a squared number. Lastly, we'll make sure that we're getting enemies. So we'll type rc.getTeam.opponent. This will give us a list of nearby enemies. For now, we'll just shoot at the enemy that is the zeroth enemy in the list, rather than searching through the list and finding the one with, say, the lowest hit points, or the one that's closest to us. We'll just shoot at any enemy. So if nearby enemies dot length, that is to say if the length of this array is greater than zero, then there are some enemies nearby. So we will try to shoot at them. Specifically, we'll try to shoot at the enemy specified by nearby enemies at zero, which is the first element in the array. Let's consult our delays chart. If we want to attack, we need to check is weapon ready and can attack location. So if RC dot is weapon ready and RC dot can attack location, specify the location nearby enemies at zero dot location, then we can go ahead and shoot RC dot attack location nearby enemies at zero dot location. So now we'll shoot at the nearest enemy. Let's take this piece of code and encapsulate it so we can share it with the headquarters. We'll call this attack enemy zero. Notice I didn't use a, a numeral in the name. Okay. Go ahead and make this method. We'll be able to use this method also for the soldiers that we produce. Again, it would like us to add a throws declaration, so we'll do that. Then I'll push save. Cool. Attack enemy zero is maybe something that we can do with the headquarters after trying to spawn a unit. One thing we could do is get the headquarters to stop spawning beavers at some point, because in some respects the miner is more efficient than the beaver. Also, spawning the beaver is going to limit the amount of times that the headquarters can attack. That is to say that if it spawns first, then it will be on spawn delay and will not be able to attack, according to this chart. You can see that spawning produces a weapon delay equal to the spawn time, so it's unable to attack during the time that it's busy spawning, and that can be approaching 100% of the time. In fact, in general, it will be if attack enemy zero comes after spawn unit. So really, attacking should be a priority. This is a matter of strategy. Let's see the result of this. We should see the enemy come close to our towers and get totally annihilated. 
This time, I'll try to remember to select player 4. I may skip ahead a little bit using this button. Let's skip ahead. Yep, our tower is totally destroying the enemy. However, we're also getting destroyed by the enemy towers. It would be smart for our robots to avoid the enemy towers. How do we do that? Here in our mine and move method, we have move around. If we edit the move around method, then all of our robots that move, that use this method, can be made to move safely. Let's check that the direction we're facing is not a tile that the enemy towers can shoot. This is kind of difficult to check. Well, we know the tile that's in front of us is rc.getLocation.addFacing. So let's save that somewhere. We'll call it map location tile in front. Okay. Copy that. And we'll paste it here. So now we will check that the direction in front is not a tile that can be attacked by the enemy towers. Enemy towers are sensible at the beginning of the match. Sense enemy tower locations. It returns a list of map locations. What we need to do is check for each of these map locations if the tile in front is within the attack range. I'll start by saying that it is not. I'll make a boolean called tile in front safe and I'll call it true. Then I'll make it false if one of, if it's in range of one of the towers. For map location M in enemy towers. This will loop through the list given by enemy towers and give each tower location the name M. If M dot distance squared to tile in front is less than or equal to robot type dot tower dot attack radius squared. So if it's within the enemy's attack radius, then tile in front safe must be false. It is not safe. Then we can leave the loop there because it doesn't matter how many tiles, how many enemy towers can see it. One is enough to make it unsafe. If it's unsafe, then in fact, we'll probably want to rotate just as if we were facing the edge of the map. So let's move this afterward. I'll use control I to fix the indentation. And I'll say if you're facing a terrain tile that's not normal or tile in front is not safe, which is to say I'll put a not operator in front of tile in front safe. If it's not safe, then go ahead and turn as if you had hit the wall. Now let's go back here and try again. We should see our robots avoid the enemy towers. They won't avoid the enemy headquarters yet because the headquarters doesn't count as a tower. Again, I'll skip ahead a little bit. Okay, we're seeing a guy approach the enemy tower, and shazam! He turns around, and he starts going elsewhere. I think that'll be the case even if our robots are approaching from any side. And you can see that we're maintaining a much larger robot count than the enemy because we are cleverly avoiding his towers. Just there, I saw some attack. I think occasionally we do, we do get destroyed. For example, this guy. It's not clear why he runs into the enemy tower. And that guy. Let's back up a little bit. OK, so we had a guy. I think that that guy was just produced at this miner factory. He was built in a tile that was unsafe. This is one of those little edge cases that's a little bit hard to detect. We won't worry about it too much. 
The next step is for us to start building soldiers, or at least some kind of unit that can attack. That'll be in the next video. I hope this helps. See you next time.